Hello viewers, in this video I'm going to look at the IOCrest USB 4 10 gigabit Ethernet adapter. And the reason I'm particularly excited about this adapter is previous adapters were available, but they were Thunderbolt 3 or 4 and they cost 200 plus dollars. This IOCrest adapter, which is USB 4 compatible with Thunderbolt 3, 4 and 5 and probably later versions as well, this only costs around $100. So the reason I want this adapter is it allows me to connect to a NAS via the Ethernet at 10 gigabits per second, which potentially allows video editing directly off the NAS. Now, of course, you could connect to a NAS, at least if it has it, using Thunderbolt. But the disadvantage of that is you then need to have it next to your Mac on your desk. And typically, these things make quite a bit of noise. Using 10 gigabit Ethernet means you can have it in a completely different room, so you don't have to listen to the fan noise. So what I'm going to do in this video is to unbox it, connect it to my Mac, and then I'm going to show you how you can use iPerf 3 to test the network performance. And in this instance, it's going to be connected to a switch, and the other computer connected to the switch is my Threadripper workstation and we'll see what the performance is between the two. So, with all that being said, let's get back in the studio and get on with it. Hello viewers, this is Charles from Charles Kirk Studio. And in this video, I'm going to look at how you can add 10 gigabit ethernet, that's twisted copper, or otherwise known as 10 g T, to your Mac. Now, some Macs, the Mac Studio, and some Mac Mini models, have inbuilt 10 gigabit Ethernet, but MacBook Pros in particular don't. So this adapter that I'm going to set up and test is a solution to that. I purchased this a couple of weeks ago. I'm in the UK, so I bought it in pounds. The US price is about the same, adjusted for the exchange rate and sales tax in the UK. Now for Mac, there's no need to install any drivers, so that makes the installation and setup quite simple. So just for a bit of background, this is what I currently have plugged into my Mac. This is the Ugreen USB to Ethernet adapter, and it's 2.5, 2.5 gig Ethernet. And it works fine, and it gets very slightly warm, but no real heat issues. Now I'm going to unbox it, and then set it up and test it. Right, unboxing. So you can see there's no tape to undo, so all I need to do is to literally just pull the top off. So I'm going to put it down, and we're in. Now, if you look here, these are the only connections. There's no connection on this end. On this end, you have your Ethernet port at the top and the USB port at the bottom. In the base of the box there's a USB cable to connect to your computer and then a couple of bits of documentation. I'm very impressed with the packaging that IOCrest are using. There's no plastic, there's no unnecessary cable ties, just cardboard so fully recyclable so fantastic. I wish other manufacturers would package their products like this. I've also off camera dismantled it so you can see inside and it's very easy to get in. It's merely a matter of undoing two screws at either end and the end plate comes off and then you're in and you can see it has a large metal heat sink uh, which then obviously conducts heat onto the main casing. I'm going to pause the recording here and then get it connected. So to test the network performance I'm going to use iPerf 3, which I'm going to set up now on my Windows box. It has dual 10 gigabit Ethernet copper. So I'm going to set up the server now in PowerShell on Windows 11. So the command you need is iperf3 and then dash s for server and then the minus one, the dash one, means it will only accept one connection. So it will test once and then it will stop the server which is what I want. So that's how you set it up. I'm going to make a separate video at some point on installing and configuring iPerf 3 
oh, I'll probably make one for Windows, one for Linux, and one for Mac. And you can see the servers listening and ready to go. So back on, back on my Mac, the first thing I'm going to do before I plug in the new USB 10 gigabit adapter is to just do the test on my existing adapter. So the first thing I'm going to do is to turn Wi-Fi off, although it doesn't make any difference because it's not using it, but we'll turn it off anyway because we don't need it. And then I'm going to type iperf3 and then dash c for client and then I need the IP address, which is 192.168.0.2.1. And that should mean when I press return that it runs the test. And I can see, uh, you can't, but I can see on the server that I'm getting the same results as on the client. Excellent. So that's the first test. Now I'm going to plug in the adapter. So I'm going to stop recording while I do that. So I now have the adapter connected to my Mac. I'm just going to show you the system settings because there's one thing you need to change. You also, by the way, need to do it on whatever you're connecting to. I'll go into that in a second. So if we look at the details and we go to hardware, you can see the MTU is set to standard and we need jumbo frames. So what I'm going to do is to switch that to manual. The settings won't change. And then I'm going to switch to jumbo 9000 and go OK. And the reason I'm going to do that is otherwise we won't get the full performance. Now it's important if you're connecting to another machine, and I'm connecting to the Windows machine, that the adapter on the other machine also has the MTU set to 9000 or jumbo frames. So with that done, and with the server restarted on my Threadripper box, let's now run iperf again and see if we get something like 10 gigabit ethernet. So I stopped recording because I wasn't happy with the performance and I restarted my switch and I restarted both computers. And now I'm going to run the test again and with a bit of luck it might work in the way that I'm expecting it to work. Namely, I'm expecting about 9.9 .9 gigabit per second. So let's see. I'm using the up and down arrow keys to select the previous commands I've typed in. So I'm going to hit return. Let's run that again. Right, you can see that the last run I'm getting consistent 9.9. .9. I'm going to map a drive from my workstation and then I'm going to run the Blackmagic Speed Utility as a test. This is the Blackmagic disk speed test. All I need to do here is to change the target drive. And the target drive I want is on the network share, which is this one, it's D. And I'm going to use this folder, which I use for testing. Right, that's now set up. Let's hit start and see what happens. You can see we're getting quite high transfer rates, about 800 megabits per second right, and it looks on the read we're nearly up to a thousand. And that's pretty much what I'd expect. So my key takeaway is if you're not getting the performance you expect, make sure you've got jumbo frames enabled on both systems. So the client, that's typically your, your laptop or your workstation and the server, in quotes, which could be your network access storage or another computer that you're trying to connect to. So it's now around a week later and I've been using the network adapter as my well, main connection. 
and I'm very pleased with it. The only thing I would say is it does run pretty hot, a lot hotter than the 2.5 gigabit adapter. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please consider clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. That helps me grow the channel and produce more great content. Have a fantastic day.